two decades later, David Thornton. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I'm going to ask the audience the most popular question that has been asked since Toastmasters clubs started meeting online. Can everybody see my screen? <laughs> Great. On September 1st, 2004, I became a member of Toastmasters International. I joined the Greater Hartford Toastmasters Club and this month, September, 2024 is my 20th year as a Toastmaster. In this presentation, I'm going to reflect on some of my experiences as a Toastmaster during the past 20 years, including some of my accomplishments and what I have learned in those past two decades. When I was younger, I had a very difficult time standing in front of a large audience and giving a speech. The speeches that I gave in high school were okay. However, the worst times I had giving a speech were when I was in college. I was very terrified when I was in class standing in front of all of those people. As time went by, I realized if I'm going to be successful in my professional life and my personal life, it is imperative that I develop public speaking skills and communication skills. One day, I learned about an organization called Toastmasters that helps people who have a fear of public speaking. In the summer of 2004, I was searching for a local Toastmasters club on the internet. I found Greater Hartford Toastmasters Club and made the life-changing decision to contact them. I clicked on the link to the club's website, however, it did not work. A woman named Christine was listed as the contact person for Greater Harvard Toastmasters on August 9th, 2004. I sent her an email expressing my interest in Toastmasters and asking if I could attend their next meeting. And Christine replied to my email telling me she was no longer a member of that club and provided the names and email addresses of two active members of that club, Frank Kane and Arnie Grote. She ended the reply by telling me that I should definitely join Toastmasters, as it says here in her reply. I sent Frank Kane an email asking if I could <clears throat> attend a meeting, and he replied and invited me to their next meeting that took place on August 17th, 2004. Here's the email that Frank sent me. At that time, Rachel Harford Toastmasters Club meetings were held at the Rensselaer Graduate Center. I went to the club meeting that night. And the people were, well, the people at that meeting were very polite and welcoming. They explained to me what Toastmasters was about. I got the impression that Toastmasters is not a class where people get graded. It's more of a support group for people who have a fear <clears throat> of public speaking. I decided to join Greater Harvard Toastmasters Club. 
I officially became a member of Greater Harvard Toastmasters in September of 2004. And that was when the transformation began. I was given the Toastmasters Communication and Leadership Manual. I brought that manual home and set in motion the first project, which was the icebreaker speech. I thought to myself, the icebreaker speech is a speech about myself. It should not be too hard. As I read the manual, I learned how to create a speech, including having an opening, a body, a conclusion. I also learned how to present a speech by making eye contact with various members of the audience by looking at, well, looking directly at one person for a few seconds, then look at another person for a few seconds so people can feel included in my speech. After I completed writing my speech, I practiced and rehearsed it numerous times at home. I was scheduled to give my icebreaker speech on Tuesday, September 21st, 2004. That night, I went to the club meeting prepared, confident, and ready to present my first Toastmaster speech to a large audience. When I arrived, there were two members in the meeting room, Frank Kane and Joe Safian. Frank and Joe ended up being the only club members who attended the meeting that night. And there were no guests that visited our club. I was expecting to give my icebreaker speech in front of a large group of people, not just two. However, it's okay. I can still practice my speech in front of two people since the purpose of a Toastmasters Club meeting is to practice giving a speech and use the skills you have learned inside a Toastmasters Club meeting to speak outside of a Toastmasters Club meeting. Frank and Joe were seated in the center of the meeting room. I was introduced by the Toastmaster of the evening. I got up, walked to the front of the room, and presented my icebreaker speech. I was not nervous at all. What was interesting about my presentation was the part of the speech project that mentioned eye contact was so ingrained in my mind. And because I was expecting to speak in front of a large group, I subconsciously gave the speech as if the meeting, the meeting room was full of people. As I was speaking, I turned my head to the right side of the room and made eye contact with the imaginary members of the audience on that side. Then I turned my head to the left side of the room and made eye contact with the imaginary members of the audience on that side. My head turned back to the center of the room. Frank and Joe was kind of confused at first, but after a while they figured out what I was doing. My speech ended with a strong conclusion and I received a great evaluation to help me improve for my next speech. The icebreaker speech was the first of many speeches I gave as I strive to achieve my goal of becoming a great speaker. I completed all 10 speech projects in the Toastmasters Communication and Leadership Manual and earned my first education award, which was known back then as the Competent Toastmaster Award or CTM. That was on June 27, 2006. That same year, 2006, the Toastmasters education program was changed. 
The Toastmasters Communication and Leadership Manual was replaced by the Competent Communicator Communication Manual. The name of the first education award was changed to Competent Communicator or CC. Another educational manual was added to the new Toastmasters Education Program, the Competent Leader Manual. I was the last member of Greater Harvard Toastmasters to achieve the Competent Toastmaster Award before the Toastmasters Education was revived in 2006. Throughout the years, I continued my Toastmasters education, developing my public speaking skills by giving speeches created from the advanced manuals and developing my leadership skills by undertaking club meeting roles and club officer positions. In 2014, I was elected to be club president for the 2014-2015 Toastmaster year. I used that club officer position to develop my skills as a leader. During that year, Greater Harford Toastmasters experienced a range of accomplishments and challenges. In 2015, I earned three education awards in a single Toastmaster year and was awarded the Triple Crown. In August of 2015, I was fortunate to attend the 2015 Toastmasters International Convention. That year, the convention took place in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Caesar Palace Hotel. I had a great time there. I met Toastmasters from various parts of the world. I took a trip outside, actually a stroll outside, exploring and I walked down the Las Vegas Strip. I attended the World Championship of Public Speaking. That was a great event. Later that night, I attended the elected newly elected Toastmasters International President's Inauguration and Dance Party, where I met more Toastmasters from around the globe. I even took pictures with Las Vegas showgirls. Well, actually two pictures. Okay, three pictures. The following, as in the following years, I continued to be active in my Toastmasters education and experience, undertaking district leadership positions, including area director and division director. I also became a club coach for a Toastmasters club that was struggling and a club mentor for a newly charted Toastmasters club. On June 11, 2020, I earned my Distinguished Toastmaster Award. Since I became a Distinguished Toastmaster, I expanded into other areas, including facilitating a club officer training and helping other Toastmasters with their speech contests. This past January, for the first time, I took a risk and decided to help another Toastmaster with a contest. I was the test speaker for an evaluation speech contest for the first time. In those past two decades, I learned how to be a better communicator and a better leader. Beyond that, I learned that 
self-improvement is definitely possible when you make the decision to improve yourself, take action to improve yourself, and also help other people improve themselves. I am glad and astonished at what I achieved in two decades, 20 years as a member of Toastmasters International where this leader was made. The end.